Hi there. <clears throat> One of the topics I was asked to speak about was image stabilization, uh, whether it should be in the lens or in the camera body. Now, I don't have uh, much experience at all with stabilized lenses. But let me give you a little history lesson here. Back in the days of film, there was no way to stabilize the sensor because the sensor was a roll of film. Moving an entire roll of film around in order to stabilize an image was simply not practical. It might have been possible if you had a big enough camera with a complex enough system in it, but really not a practical way of stabilizing. The result is that companies such as Canon and Nikon uh, <clears throat> developed stabilized lenses based on basically the same technology used in their stabilized binoculars and telescopes in order to be able to allow for a certain amount of camera motion when pictures are being taken. The result, stabilized lenses. Now, nowadays, Canon and Nikon, uh, well, less so in, in the past couple of years, but when the first of the stabilized in-body stabilization systems came out, Canon and Nikon made a big deal about how their in-lens systems were better. Now, is there any truth in that? At that point, maybe. They looked better to the consumer because when you look through the viewfinder, the optical viewfinder of a digital SLR with a stabilized lens, the image will stabilize. If it's in body stabilization with an optical viewfinder, through the viewfinder, things are still jumping all around because it's the sensor that is now moving in order to compensate. And it's, you're not seeing what's hitting the sensor, you're looking at an optical view. Well, many companies now offer in-body stabilization. Some systems now are extremely good. The system uh, that Olympus uses, the system that Sony uses, uh, recently Panasonic, has gotten into that. Uh, Pentax has had in-body stabilization for quite a few years now. Many of these systems now are tremendously good. And some of them are now piggybacking the two systems. They're actually adding uh, image stabilization to some of their lenses that will work with the uh, stabilization in the camera body. So, which is better? On its own, by itself, it seems that in modern cameras, in-body stabilization has finally caught up to and possibly surpassed in-lens stabilization. If you look at reports on, on uh, the modern Olympus cameras, uh, you'll find people making claims of extremely low shutter speeds handheld. And these aren't hollow claims. These are real. So... In-body stabilization seems to have caught up and surpassed in-lens stabilization. So, why aren't Nikon and Canon jumping on this? Because they have invested many, many years and huge amounts of money into stabilized lenses. They can't just drop this and move on now. So the result is they're, they're kind of sitting back and uh, hoping no one notices. Now, I, I'm not in any way trying to degrade Nikon and Canon. I mean, they make some of the best cameras out there. Professional equipment uh, are, you know, second to none. I'm merely pointing out the fact that uh, when you are looking at these systems now, in-body systems work. Uh, Olympus has just introduced two lenses that have uh, in-lens optical stabilization, which is new for Olympus. Why did they do that? Well, one of them is a 300 millimeter lens, which of course will act as, give you the field of view of a 600 millimeter lens, which means that it is very prone to camera shake. By adding a second level of stabilization in the lens and the camera body, they have produced an amazing system 
that works tremendously well. Panasonic is doing the same thing. They're using their stabilized lenses with in-body stabilization now in many of their cameras to result is in a better system than either was by itself. Companies like Fuji, they're still putting stabilization in some of their lenses and not in the camera body. Will that change? Who knows? Uh, generally speaking, uh, any company that's bringing out longer lenses are more concerned about stabilization than companies who use shorter focal lengths. Leica, for instance, is not likely to get into stabilization because basically if you have a Leica M, your range of focal lengths is from ultra-wide up to maybe 135 millimeters and hardly anything beyond that. Uh, so folks, give it some thought. Uh, do a little research on your own. Please, don't just take my word for it. But uh, remember one thing, that uh, most camera companies, their, their major point is marketing. Uh, they're really trying to sell their product as being superior. But you do need to do a little research on your own to be sure. All right. Uh, if you like this video, click like. If you want to subscribe to this channel for more videos, please do. And of course, if you want to share this with someone else, by all means. Bye for now.